You'd have to be gifted to have caught all of these references. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 X-Men movie franchise Easter eggs. What would you prefer, yellow spandex? Before we begin, we publish new content every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. That means we're looking at brief moments, obscure shots, and subtle nods that reference other X-Men characters, organizations, or other films. As always, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Let us go talk to the professor. McAvoy or Stewart? Number 10, Zip It Thanos, Deadpool 2. In this sequel, Wade Wilson continued his fourth wall-breaking tradition. Just before the climactic battle, Deadpool and Cable have a small disagreement. And they were enemies just a few minutes ago, so that's totally understandable. During the tussle, Deadpool tells Cable, Zip it, Thanos! Which is a reference to the fact that actor Josh Brolin plays both Cable in the X-Verse and the Mad Titan Thanos in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. At another point in the movie, Wade also calls him One-Eyed Willy, a reference to the movie The Goonies, which Josh Brolin also had a part in. Give me your best shot, One-Eyed Willy! Number 9. Cyclops and Storm in Cerebro, X-Men First Class. Through Cerebro, I'm connected to them. And they to me. Cerebro is an advanced piece of technology created by Professor Xavier and Magneto that helps them to detect and find people with the mutant gene so that they can be contacted and offered help and safety at the Xavier School. Of course, despite their shared history and interests, Professor X and Magneto have some fundamental ideological differences. During an X-Men first class scene in which Charles is searching for someone, we can catch a brief glimpse of two characters we should be familiar with, Cyclops and Storm. This foreshadows the fact that these two characters will eventually become X-Men themselves. Number 8. The Liefeld Jab, Deadpool 2. It's just, it's hard to picture, and certainly not very cinematic. Rob Liefeld is a comic writer and artist who was huge in the 1990s. He's probably best known for co-creating the X-Force, along with one of the series' more mouthy characters, Deadpool. He had a successful career at Marvel and DC, and was one of the co-founders of Image Comics, a publisher that changed the industry. Despite being such a huge influence on the comics industry, he is often the butt of many jokes due to artistic eccentricities and technical shortcomings. One stereotype that has stuck with him, deservedly so, is that he can't draw feet well. So, naturally, Deadpool can't help but take a crack at his creator. Probably a guy who can't draw feet! <laughs> Number 7. Strikers List, X2, X-Men United. Why did you come back? William Stryker is one of the main antagonists in the series of X-Men movies, and he has various ties to several prominent mutants. Though he is clearly anti-mutant, he does see them as useful tools to achieve his ends, if properly controlled. And as fate would have it, his own son turns out to be a powerful mutant. In a brief scene in X2, we catch a glimpse of Stryker's mutant list. It contains some names that are sure to excite fans of the mutant super team. Was this list meant to hint at future plans for the X-Men flicks? Though many never made it on screen, the list confirms the existence of a huge cast of characters within the film universe. I'd like to have one final talk about the house that Xavier built and the machine called Cerebro. Number 6. Ween and Claremont. X-Men, Days of Future Past. After what happened in Cuba? Len Wein was an award-winning comic artist who had a huge influence on the industry. He was the co-creator of several important comic characters, including Swamp Thing, Storm, and Colossus, just to name a few. For his work, he was inducted into the Eisner Comic Book Hall of Fame. Chris Claremont is an artist and was a frequent collaborator with Wein. Together, they co-created Wolverine and helped revive the struggling X-Men franchise. Claremont even co-wrote the hugely influential 1981 storyline Days of Future Past. Fittingly, Ween and Claremont can briefly be seen in the 2014 movie adaptation, a nice tribute to the minds behind the story on the screen. Number 5. Deadpool's Costume, Deadpool 2 The Merc with a Mouth's gray and black X-Force suit is admittedly pretty cool. Rather than actually having Wade put it on, however, the sequel instead burns Deadpool badly enough to discolor his regular suit and cover it in ash to create the same effect. This was a nice bit of fan service that managed to avoid the cliché outfit upgrade scene that usually accompanies it, which added to its impact. Of course, seeing him don a variation of his X-Men outfit was also a real treat. Tell me they got that in slow motion. Number 4. Trask Industries, The Wolverine. Where is it going? Same place they are. 
Trask Industries. In the comics, Trask Industries is the organization behind many anti-mutant technologies. These include mutant detecting devices, weapons, and the notorious Sentinels. Their presence is felt throughout several of the X-Men movies, but Trask most notably appears in X-Men Days of Future Past, in which he's played by Game of Thrones actor Peter Dinklage. Would you mind taping up my itinerary? I don't want to miss anything. Before that, however, we got to see hints of this evil anti-mutant organization in the mid credit scene of 2013's The Wolverine. This is just another great way that stories and characters interconnect across media and within this film series. Trask Industries, solving tomorrow's problems today. Number 3. Mr. Sinister, X-Men Apocalypse, and Deadpool 2 Nathaniel Essex is an X-Men villain created by Chris Claremont and Mark Silvestri. He first appeared in the Mutant Massacre storyline. He's a shadowy figure who's played a large part in the early life of Cyclops and has had various evil schemes attached to his name over the years. This includes cloning Jean Grey and releasing the Legacy Virus, a plague that killed hundreds of mutants. In X-Men Apocalypse in a post credit scene, we see the cleanup crew working for a corporation called Essex. In Deadpool 2, Russell is being tormented at the Essex house. Talk about looming, sinister presence. Russell, quick! Number 2. The Death of Wolverine – Logan You're holding your own heart in your hand. It's not beating. In 2013's The Wolverine, Yukio predicts Logan's fate. She says that he'll die on his back with blood everywhere, holding his own heart in his hand. It is a grisly fate to be sure. Well, it turns out her prediction was pretty spot on. She just wasn't speaking literally. At the end of Logan, Wolverine goes out on his back with blood everywhere, but he isn't holding his own heart. He's holding his clone daughter, who, over the course of the film, has become his metaphorical heart. And maybe literal too if you consider that she's his clone. Either way, the screenwriters did a great job of tying these films together. You don't be what they made you. Jeez, who knew they could have foreshadowed such an emotional moment like that? Any idea what could top it? It would have to be a great Easter egg and a great moment. Let's check out these honorable mentions, and then we'll see what hit number one. I think we can all agree that shit just went sideways in the most colossal way. Well, maybe not the most. Wait, is that you? This is it. In the sky. Number one, Pietro and Magneto, X-Men Days of Future Past. They told me you control metal. Just before one of the coolest scenes in the entire franchise, where Quicksilver puts on some tunes and saves the day, we see a short scene between him and Magneto where it's revealed that Quicksilver's mother once knew a guy who could control metal. This is a nod to the fact that in the comics, Quicksilver, whose real name is Pietro, is Magneto's son. Magneto actually also has a daughter who later becomes Scarlet Witch, and who happens to be Quicksilver's twin. Because of the deal between Fox and Marvel Studios, the characters needed a different origin story in the Avengers movie, however. Again, this just goes to show how much thought and care went into translating these characters and their stories to the big screen in an interconnected way. You know, my mom once knew a guy who could do that. Dramatic deaths, different parentage. What is this, like a soap opera? Anyway, let us know in the comments if you noticed any Easter eggs that we missed. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out these other videos to keep yourselves occupied.